any of the women nursing babies, they came and they took Anne Gibbons' newborn baby and they wet nursed her until she was old enough to feed herself. They saved her life. What's beautiful about it is that little baby, that little girl, gained four mothers, even though she lost her real mother. Each woman uh, who had helped save her considered her to be part of their family. Walked into Port Arthur and we're taking the boat to us. So we've got to bang it over to the boat. Everyone's walking over there now, so we're not the last ones on the boat. For the so, Isle of the Dead cruise, which we've done before. Mm, two hours, so four years ago on a honeymoon again. The island where they bury, buried the dead convicts. Yeah. Some of their stories. Or is balancing soup. the soup. <laughs> Trying not to. We're doing really well. So Port Arthur is a historical site where they had convicts back in the, I'm guessing 1800s, I think it was, when they first came to Australia, um, 1700s possibly. They had convicts, convicts here, and this is probably one of the oldest um, jails sites in Australia. And it's great to come back here and see, yeah, what we saw last time and reminisce. Yeah. And see the sites. We've got three hours. Our friend's going to go out and see their sites they want to see. Um, so I hope they enjoy that. Might get some photos off them. And we're going to go on the boat now across to the Isle of the Dead. The crazy thing about this place is it's actually stunning scenery wise. Um, with the water and the mountains and everything. So you think, oh man, this is actually a place of, of death and yeah. prison. But it's in a beautiful place. Welcome to the Isle of Dead. My name's Helen. Um, I'm going to be your guide and take you around uh, the Isle of Dead. It's my job. Good job, isn't it? Yeah. I'll meet people for about five seconds and then I'll welcome you to a cemetery. Now, this is an island where they decided they were going to turn it into... Let's turn that down. Turn it into the burial site for the residents of Port Arthur. Yeah. Why would they choose an island? It seems weird, doesn't it? Mm. So they're going to use what they knew to inform them of what was going to happen here. And we can see that quite clearly. They come here and recreate a little piece of England. So when um, you've got Commandant Booth asking Reverend John Allen Manton to find a suitable burial ground, what does he know about burial, death and burial? Well, if he's coming from a busy city like London, what he knows is body snatchers and grave diggers. Ooh. Perhaps that idea of safe and secure, because really, what else is he keeping it safe and secure? Mm -hmm. Or perhaps the idea is when we look back at that main site, have a look at that difficult terrain and that dense vegetation. So 1833, they wouldn't have cleared much. It took them 20 years to clear that site, of the main site. And so real estate's valuable. And if you clear a piece of land, you've got facilities and infrastructure to build. You can't be wasting it on burial ground. Then when we look at the vegetation here, it's not like the vegetation back then. Oh. So mm -hmm. it's exposed um, sort of position meant that uh, they probably were able to grub the roots out a bit easier here and clear it as they needed. Interesting to note, they did a survey of the island not long after deciding this was where they were going to put the burial ground and worked out they could bury 2,000 people here. Mm. So it's quite amazing to think that. Uh, last count, 1,100. Mm. Really interesting to note that here at Port Arthur, you'll notice uh, over on the main site, very definite areas that are convict areas, very definite areas that are free people areas. They're not sharing a lot of facility together kept quite separate mm. two places they share the same facility this is one of them and the other one's on the main part of the site the bookend the church don't worry they divvied up the space inside the church as well according to class, class. so convicts uh reverend john allen manton he says they're not to have um any markers or headstones to say where they're buried okay. it's kind of a practical thing behind it it's hard to believe there was but there was um, the idea was, um, he justified that, he said, well, you know, they're sinners in life and therefore would have no need to be recognised in death. So we're not mm. wasting any resources doing it, essentially. We do see some stones, though, down in this lower ground, which they designated for the convicts, so the lower southern side of the island. It's about 900 buried around us. It's the reason why our pathways are so tight. 
and then let me stick to them. You will see a couple of stones sort of dotted about the place and these are memorial stones. So as time went on, you know, they changed their attitudes, particularly after transportation came to an end in 1854. Right, that made a huge difference. They relaxed a bit. Also, they're getting a different type of convict. Getting a convict on a ticket of leave who's maybe here at Port Arthur because he's sick, he's old, there's no one to look after him, he's got a disability or a, a mental health issue. Okay, so convicts serving time, losing their lives buried here, suddenly start getting joined by a population of lunatics, uh, the sick and the infirmed and the old. It really affected what type of uh, experience you had, uh, whether you were a convict or not a convict. Okay. So to give you a bit of an indication, boys in uh, the slums or the poorer classes, if they were caught maybe stealing some fruit off a tree, okay, out of an orchard, uh, maybe pilfering a loaf of bread, they could get hung for that. Mm -hmm. Okay, seen as the worst kind of crime. Uh, as you can imagine, towards the end, ageing population of convicts, there's an increase in deaths. So what they did was thought, hey, to make it more efficient, we'll put a grave digger out here full time, and that should speed up the process and make it more efficient. That was the idea. So can you see the little hut to the side? That's the grave digger's hut. Two grave diggers, John Barrett, this man, Mark Jeffrey. We'll talk about him in a minute. It was a novelty to have a grave digger out here. There was no precedence for it. They said, well, we need a grave to get him, but I'll do it. He takes a chance, puts his hand up and says, I'll be your first grave digger. Right, okay, volunteer, put him out here. Uh, and that risk he took of coming out here, not knowing what to expect, pays off for him. He's out here for over 10 years, got his ticket of leave, left Port Arthur, and got away unscathed, undamaged. Hmm. Okay, so he manages wow. to get away and it works for him. But being the grave digger on the island was the most wonderful. Really? That's the most wonderful? <laughs> I don't think so. What's happening to the men back at that main site if this is the mm. most wonderful? You see, that's what happened. He saw them over there, comes over and sees John, and he can see that certain things are working for John out here that are not working for them back over there. But someone actually suggested one time he could grow cabbages to supplement his diet in that garden. And he recoiled at horror at that suggestion, said I couldn't eat anything that had been grown out of such a soil. Just couldn't believe anyone mm. had suggested it to him. So maybe it didn't sit that well, but he made it work. Okay, he was smart enough to make it worth and he, he was one of the few that got away from here undamaged, uh, which is pretty amazing. We never heard of him ever again, fantastic thing. If they got away from Port Arthur and you never hear of them again, because that meant that they probably went on and had a decent life. Our other convict, Grave digger. There he is, Mark Jeffrey. Oh my goodness. He was built like a Mack truck, had a violent temper, uh, and he went off like a firecracker. He's here towards the end because he comes after John. So it's getting towards the end of the settlement. They didn't want to deal with that. <laughs> okay, there's just with too much trouble. You know, he's just, it's a risk to the other convicts. He's keep, it's just causing too much trouble. So they said, all right. You're going out there, you're going to be the next grave digger. They're moving him off to keep him away, keep everyone safe. And they brought him out here. And he too looked like he was doing all right, except about four months in, one morning, he's signalling to the guards at Port Arthur, get over here. So they roll over to see what was wrong. Uh, and he's agitated and says, take me off the island, I don't want to be here anymore. And when they pressed him for details and said, well, why? And he said, well, he said, I don't want to be here anymore. And they said, why? And he said, well, on the previous evening, I'd had a visitation from his satanic majesty. He'd spooked himself. He's thinking the devil had come and got him. Now, you imagine on a stormy night, mm. there wouldn't be so much fun out here. Have a look at his neighbours. Look how close mm. they are. <laughs> okay, it'd be yeah. really scary to be out here. And quite understandable. What the interesting thing is, of course, they took him back, put him in the barracks, couldn't get him to come out here. He just said, no, nope, not doing it. And when they tried to get other convicts, he'd already told them what had happened. They couldn't get any more convicts to come out. They were all going, no, nope, we're not going out there. So that was the end and they reverted back to the old way. You're enjoying this? 
This may look like I'm taking photos. Any of the women nursing babies? They came and they took Anne Gibbon's newborn baby and they wet nursed her and she was old enough to feed herself. They saved her life. What's beautiful about it is that little baby, that little girl, gained four mothers, even though she lost her real mother. Each woman uh, who had helped save her considered her to be part of their family, which is pretty amazing, isn't it? And we get uh, relatives of um, Anne Gibbon's baby coming here to pay their respects. And we had one about six weeks ago. It's always wonderful. <laughs> Highest point of the island, you got the most important man. Have a look, they're, they're even trying to elevate him even more, creating steps up. They really ramped it up, haven't they? Ooh. Ramp up, <gasps> ramp up, Pawnee. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you, that was amazing. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Oh, yeah. so engaging. Thank really you. easy to listen to. Well, it's very interesting. <laughs> yeah, it is. It'd be an interesting job, wouldn't it? I suppose you don't want to do that in this street now. Like. How'd you go? Yeah, it's so good, it's so interesting. Um, yeah, I tried to put myself in their shoes. Take us into your favourite room. So this is where the commandant did his letters and writing and sat and looked at the fire and probably contemplated over the problems between officials and... Imagine living up there. <laughs> Out in pitch black. Um, oh gosh. Mm. What's it like? Eerie, silent, dark, and haunting. Fill us, Laura. They built this to stop using physical punishment instead to punish the mind instead. In 19, uh, 1810, it was rejected by Parliament. Mm. They weren't even allowed to have their names used, they were numbers. It's just such a beautiful place, nature wise, and the birds are all singing, yet you think it was such a joyless place. What can you tell us? We just went into the chapel and 
Um, we're actually two convicts that have just gotten together. Um, we'd meet at the, at the church grounds because God created love and we got to know each other and now that we're free we're getting married. That's really something. But where are we, Laws? We're at the government cottage, which was built in 1853, and it appears to have never had a permanent resident, just several officers who lived in it for a short time. The cottage was sold after the closure of the settlement and was burnt down in 1895. Fires! Oh. <laughs> How do you? so much for watching. Laura, what do you want to say? Yay, Tassie! Yay, Tassie is an amazing place which we definitely recommend you go to.